afternoon, everybody. My name is Marsha Hampton. I'm the Community and Downtown Services Director with the City of Douglasville. I'm here on behalf of Bill Osborne, our City Manager. He walked in my office the other day and said, Marsha, you're going to be me on Friday. So I guess I had to figure out what that meant. So um, I'm happy to have you guys here. I'm happy to represent Mr. Osborne. He does send his regards. Uh, and hopefully uh, we have a good time today with this commemorative celebration in honor of former Sheriff Earl D. Lee. I'm happy to have everyone in the family, those who were here to speak. And without further ado, I'll have our mayor come up to give our welcome. And again, thanks everyone for coming out. Thank you, Marsha, and I appreciate that. And let me say this first and foremost, it's certainly an honor and a privilege for me to be up here today and on behalf of the city of Douglasville and honor someone that certainly contributed a tremendous amount to our community over his life. Over 20 years as the sheriff of our great community and I believe what almost 30 years or more in law enforcement. So quite a career, quite a person and I believe is pretty much a legend certainly in our community if not the nation. I read the other day some remarks that uh, Sheriff Miller had made about that uh, people from all across the country sometimes had sometimes asked that uh, uh, Sheriff Lee be used or get him to interrogate and talk to them to get confessions and get information out of them. So uh, that's quite a testament to the job that he did and the law enforcement officer that he was. So once again, it's certainly an honor and a privilege to me to be able to stand up here on behalf of the city of Douglasville and recognize the dedication of this street that we're gonna name in honor of Sheriff Earl D. Lee. We have a lot of elected officials with us today. I'm gonna at least recognize the city council members that uh, helped me name this street after Earl D. Lee. I see back in the back, we have Councilman McLean. If you'll raise your hand, please. We have Mayor Pro Tem Larry Yockey with us. We have uh, Councilman Carl Pope back in the back. Do we have any other council members here that I'm missing? Then we have several of our commissioners. I'm not gonna introduce the chairman at this point because he's gonna be next up here. But I do see uh, Commissioner Mike Mulcair back there in the back. I see Judge James back in the back. Who else, who am I missing? I see Commissioner Ann Jones. I, I, I saw him kept pointing, but I couldn't see her for this gentleman standing here. Am I missing any other elected official other than I see uh, Judge Emerson back there in the back? And I'm not going to, uh, at this point, recognize the elected officials that are going to be speaking because they'll be coming up here. And they'll one will be introducing the one that will be uh, succeeding them. I see our tax commissioner back in the back, Todd Cowan. Am I missing anyone? Well, again, it's an honor and a privilege to stand up here on behalf of the city of Douglasville for this momentous occasion. Back a few months ago, our sheriff, Phil Miller, came to me or gave me a phone call and said he had an idea and wanted to talk with me about doing something. And I said, uh-oh, what's it going to be, sheriff? But uh, he told me what he would like to see us do and asked if there was any interest on behalf of the city. And I said, certainly there's interest on behalf of the city. And then we had conversation with the chairman to see if the county was also interested. So this has been a joint and a collective community effort. It hadn't been just something that the cities wanted to do or just the counties wanted to do. But as you're going to see, there's active participation from the city the county, the judiciary, and the law enforcement community. And I think that speaks exceptionally well about an individual, their life, and what we're doing. It's not just one part of the community that's recognizing the efforts that Sheriff Lee put forth, but it's a collective effort on the part of our entire community. So Sheriff, thank you for uh, bringing this up and thinking of it. And then, like I said, then it was a collective effort on behalf of our entire community to do this. 
Let me read a resolution that the city had on August the 20th. And the resolution is, whereas on August the 20th, 2012, the Douglasville City Council unanimously, let me say that again, unanimously adopted a resolution to name the entrance to the new Douglas County Law Enforcement and Adult Detention Center to be Earl D. Lee Boulevard. And whereas, in order to be perfectly clear as to this city council's intent in naming the entrance to the new Douglas County Law Enforcement and Adult Detention Center to be Earl D. Lee Boulevard, we adopt, we are adopting this subsequent resolution. And whereas the entrance to this new facility is an existing street which intersects with Georgia Highway 92, better known as Fairburn Road and in the past was named South Cherokee Boulevard until the City Council's action on August the 20th, 2012. And whereas, so there is explicit action by this City Council on the naming of this street, Earl D. Lee Boulevard, in honor and in memory of the legendary Sheriff, Earl D. Lee, who served Douglas County in law enforcement for some 30 years and in the process built a reputation for himself and the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, which has stood the test of time. And whereas the Sheriff Lee was widely recognized for his diligent work to bring professionalism to the Sheriff's Office with an emphasis on training and commitment to the job. And whereas during his distinguished career in law enforcement, Sheriff Lee loved and served the citizens of Douglas County and work to keep this community safe. Whereas the city of Douglasville wanted to recognize and honor former Sheriff Lee, Earl D. Lee, for his many contributions to the Douglasville, Douglas County community. Now therefore, be it re resolved by the mayor and council of the city of Douglasville that the entrance to the Douglas County Law Enforcement and Adult Detention Center, which is in the past had been South Cherokee Boulevard, now is named Earl D. Lee Boulevard. So resolved this first day of October 2012, and it's signed by the entire city council and myself as mayor. And again, it's certainly an honor and a privilege to recognize Earl D. Lee for his contributions to this great community I salute you, the family, and thank you for being here today. I want to thank each and every one of you who took time out of your busy day to be here and help us commemorate this momentous dedication ceremony. So with that, that being said, the rest of the program, I believe you have a copy of it. I'm going to introduce our chairman, Tom Wortham, and then after that, we'll have remarks from our district attorney, David McDade, remarks from Judge Bo McLean. Sheriff Miller, and then I believe Sheriff Miller is going to introduce the family and we'll ask the family to, uh, to come forward and make a couple of brief comments. And then after that, uh, we're going to unveil the sign and then I have a presentment to give to the family and we'll conclude today's ceremonies. With that, Chairman, if you'll come forward and make your comments, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you've heard me say many times that the first priority of any government, whether it's local, federal, or state, is the protection of our citizens and their property. And I believe that today as well. And it was instilled to me back in 1984 when I first offered myself as a public official, first time I ran for office. There was two people you were supposed to go see back in those days in 1984. One was Jimmy Smith, and the other was Earl D. Lee. So I called Sheriff Lee up. He had already been in office, I think been elected two terms already at the time, and um, was well seated in that position. Uh, but, you know, if you were going to get elected, that's, that's the people you had to go see. I asked Earl, first of all, he marched me into his office. There was a sofa sitting right in front. I'm sure Phil remembers this sofa that sat right in front of Earl's desk. And he looked up at me and said, son, if you want to get elected, you got to do these things. I looked at him and, you know, he's sitting up here on this desk 
huge man, big man, cowboy boots and all that stuff. And I was scared to death. And uh, he looked at me and he said, son, you'll have to provide me the tools that I need to protect our citizens and protect their property and to protect the children. He was big on protecting our children. And I looked up at him and, you know, I didn't know what to say. He had all these captains and lieutenants back behind me. They weren't saying anything, but they were behind me at the time. And I looked at him and I said, yes, sir. That's all that you could say to Earl D. Lee. Earl was my friend. He was my neighbor in Lithia Springs for many, many years. And he was a great sheriff. And although he's not with us today, his legacy still remains here in Douglas County. Many of the current programs that we have today were started by Earl Lee, our first K-9 team, our first SWAT team. Also, many of his employees are still with the Douglas County Sheriff's Department, and Phil Miller was one of those as well. I'm so glad I want to thank Earl for the many years of service to our community. And Earl Lee to, today to me is, is still a wonderful person, a wonderful person that loved this community. He loved it so much. And the thing about it, the community loved him back. So we're so proud of had Earl D. Lee in my life. Thank you very much. Bonnie Smith, what Tom Worthen just said is absolutely correct. Uh, there were and are two people in this county that you're supposed to see when you get into politics or if when you cross into the county line. Uh, when I started in prosecution, early is and was the man and still is the man. But the first time I met Earl Lee and talked politics, he told me the first person I better see was Jimmy. And Earl took me to meet Jimmy. and. Uh, that, that touched me when you said that. It brought back some really sweet memories for both of us. Uh, and you know what I'm talking about. I want to thank uh, Mayor Persons, Commissioner Worthen, Sheriff Miller, uh, for dedicating this road, for coming up with the idea to dedicate this road so that a thousand people an hour, however many it is that drive underneath that sign, uh, know the man that I knew. Now, he may not have had sons on birth certificates, but he had a lot of sons, and I was one of them. Uh, Earl was my father, my brother, my mentor. Uh, Earl meant more to me in my life than any other human being uh, outside of my own parents. And he knew that, and he talked to me like a brother, like a father. Uh, there was nothing I couldn't talk to Earl about. It, it, there's nothing more fitting than naming a road after your daddy. Uh, that is the road to justice in Douglas County. That's what it is. It's a road to justice. Every person that's going to be arrested in the rest of the history of this jail will be taken down the road to justice named after Earl Lee. And I'm going to take it one step further. And I've had a brief conversation with the sheriff about this. And I think some of you know where I'm headed. Not only should that road be named after Earl Lee, but that building needs to be named after Earl Lee as well. It needs to be the Earl Lee Justice Center. Uh, I don't care what the politics of it are. It's just what's the right thing to do is what I'm saying. Uh, Captain Herb and I were talking before I took the podium about all the stories we have about Earl. And we're both sitting there saying, we can't tell that one. We can't tell that one. We can't tell that one. And we were both kind of afraid that whatever story we told would be one that might put somebody on the spot. And we're right, it is. Everybody here has an early story. Everybody here has a story that you're in your mind thinking about right now. Be it your father, your husband, your uncle, whoever he was to you. Just somebody you love, somebody that you followed. Earl means more to this community than any other person that's ever been in this community as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he didn't found it like the James family. He didn't plow it up like the James ancestors did. Uh, and I respect Judge James and his ancestors and everybody that built this community. But Earl is the person that took care of this community while he was sheriff. Earl is the person that made it safe. 
Judge McLean, who's going to follow me, will recall a number of times in our careers as prosecutors, bad guys. I'm talking about evil, evil men. Uh, feared early. We still, to this day, encounter people in Atlanta, people outside of this county, that will not come into Douglas County to commit crimes because of the reputation that Earl created. We still hear on wiretaps and undercover recordings bad guys saying, I'm not going out there, that's early territory to this day. Now, those bad guys, when we do take them to jail, when Sheriff Miller's people lock them up, he's going to drive them under a sign that tells them, you're right, this is early country. It always has been and always will be. Thank you, folks, for making it that way. Mr. McDay's a hard act to follow, but I'm going to give it my best shot. First thing I want to say is thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council, everyone involved for a, a long overdue recognition of Sheriff Lee, and also for your invitation for me to be a part of it and to speak for only two or three minutes, which I have never done before. And rather than give a speech, uh, I'm going to tell a story that will technically be censored, but uh, I'm still going to tell a story nonetheless. Some of us uh, here today have had an experience the rest of us have not had. We have sat in Sheriff Earl D. Lee's lap. Susan has... Lynn has, Kathy has, the grandkids have. I'm not going to say anything about Miss Betty at uh, this particular moment. I'm not going in that direction, but uh, I have too. 23 years ago, this week, I was out west with Sheriff Lee and Deputy Sheriff Brian Camp and we were going out there to get some prisoners that had fled Douglas County, uh, had committed crimes here, and then ended up out west, and we were going out there to get them and bring them back. And on October 17, 1989, an earthquake hit, and it was the World Series earthquake, if you can remember that. And when that earthquake hit, me and Sheriff Lee and Brian Camp were out in Flagstaff, Arizona, uh, headed to Phoenix, to get a convict. And at one point during our trip, the van broke down out in the Arizona desert. So we got rescued by a tow truck, but the problem was we had four really big men sitting in the cab of a small tow truck, and the only place for Assistant DA Bo McLean to sit was in the lap of Sheriff Earl D. Lee. So I sat in Sheriff Lee's lap for almost an hour, uh, headed to some little town to get our van fixed. And you know, a lot of the local attorneys here in Douglas County, Georgia, have felt for a long time that the DAs and the assistant DAs spent all their time sitting in Earl Lee's lap, listening to Earl tell them what to do. And I actually sat in his lap. True story. But the truth is, During the time that Earl Lee was our sheriff, we all rested in his lap, in his arms. He took care of us. He protected us. He looked after us. And he gave his life for us. After Sheriff Lee retired, I continued to go see him. And I made the pilgrimage to almost a farm about twice a month during the remaining years of his life just to go see him. That's right, come on. I'd go see Sheriff Lee and, uh, and I saw him just about every month from the day he retired till the day he died. And he didn't have the long life of rest in retirement that, that he had earned or that we hope for for ourselves. 
And that's because He gave us so much. He left very little for Himself. I take comfort in the fact that right now, Earl D. Lee has that rest in the lap of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ up in heaven. Today, it, it seems that our leaders are so small and our problems are so big. But here in Douglas County, we had the incredible honor of knowing a great man up close. And not only knowing him, but as the other speakers have said, as Mr. McDade has said, the mayor, the chairman, and as the sheriff will say, we had the honor and privilege of knowing him up close and also enjoying the benefits of Earl D. Lee being a great man in our community. We enjoyed the benefits of his greatness. So it's a fitting tribute. And as Mr. McDade said, and I completely and totally and utterly agree with what Mr. McDade said, uh, this is a fitting tribute, but I hope it's not the last to a great man. I hope it's the beginning of the tributes that we're going to pay to this man. Because of Earl Lee, we and our families could go to sleep at night and know that we were safe because he stood watch over us. It didn't matter how big the problem was or how dark the evil became. We all took comfort in the fact that Earl was there and he will know what to do. You know what I'm talking about, David. Whatever the problem was, Scotty, whatever the issue was, we weren't worried about it because we knew that Sheriff Lee would handle it. When the phone rang in the middle of the night, it was Earl D. Lee that got up out of bed, got dressed, put on his gun belt, and left his family to care for ours. Now that he's gone, we've got to learn to care for each other without him. And I hope we get there someday. I want to conclude with a quote I wanted to try to find a quote that, that maybe said what I want to say today by someone a lot smarter than me, and it comes from Longfellow. Heights by great men reached and kept were not obtained by sudden flight, but while their companions slept, they were toiling upward in the night. That's our Earl D. Lee. May God bless Sheriff Lee his family, and our county, his county. Thank you. I think what he said, Judge, uh, if, if you'll recall, is it ain't no hill for a climber. And uh, uh, that's the way he approached life. That's the way he, he approached law enforcement. And... Uh, he meant that he uh i i worked i'm not interrupting you emma pounds uh, <laughs> just joking i uh i along with all of you guys that uh that worked with him uh ha have gone to work at, in the morning on monday morning and some not sometimes not go home to thursday night now I, I know you might think that's an exaggeration but it is not that couch that you saw Tom uh, uh, as a couch that I slept on and that he slept on and he didn't have to have as much sleep as, as we did. Uh, he, he would sleep 45 minutes and uh, he was ready to go for another 16 hours and we literally worked cases sometimes three or four days in a row because he believed that a lead was a lead right then and it might not be a lead in 15 or 20 or, or 30 minutes or getting off at 5 o'clock and coming back at 8 o'clock in the morning and going back to work on the case so we had to go and we had to do it right then the, uh, the what people may or may not know about Earl Lee is he is in my opinion the father of modern law enforcement in Douglas County he created the record division the first detective division the first SWAT team he categorized each person's job and identified it and once that happened we became professional and we began to make some great strides in law enforcement in this county uh whatever i am uh, 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 i owe 100 percent 
to Earl Lee. He taught me how to interview people. He taught me how to work cases. He taught me how, how to... Earl Lee and I dug up five bodies with our own hands. That's the truth, folks. I got pictures to prove it. Uh, but to, to, to go with him and to, to understand his mind and the way it worked in order to solve a crime was phenomenal. But he had that don't quit attitude and he was great. And, and, and traveling around, we all ha have some road trip stories, but uh, I went with him to Georgetown, Texas to interview Henry Lucas. I went to, to Stark, Florida with him to, to interview Otis Toole. Otis Toole confessed to killing Adam Walsh. Uh, uh, whether he did or not, I don't know, but, but John Walsh believes he did. Uh, but uh, uh, the Billy Sunday Burke, Billy Sunday Burke killed 56 people. Billy Sunday Burke didn't talk to anybody in law enforcement but Earl Lee. He had a knack to sit down not just with criminals but with us. Uh, you couldn't lie to Earl Lee, and, and, and you could not talk to him. If he would, he, he, You could sit down with him, and, and he would talk to you about your mama and your education and what you did when you was a kid, and all of a sudden, before you know it, and not even meaning to, you're spilling your guts. And, and, and it was a phenomenal time in Douglas County. We didn't have any unsolved murders. Uh, we had very few unsolved crimes, and it was a result of, uh, of his attitude, his tenacity, uh, and his training and the demands that he put on us. Uh, but he never, ever asked us to, to do anything that he wouldn't do. And, and he didn't go home while you were out there working. He stayed with you. So, so it's an honor for me. I, you know, I, the, the mayor gave me credit uh, for, uh, for, for this being my idea, but actually it's an idea of a lot of people. Uh, uh, Judge McLean, David McDade, uh, Jimmy Smith before he died, we all wanted to recognize Earl Lee because he had been our friend. But he, what people don't give him credit for is that he was the best friend, uh, one of the best friends that Douglas County could have ever, ever had. And uh, it's an honor for me to be able to, uh, starting in December, every day I go to work, I'm going to ride down Earl D. Lee Boulevard. And so I'm proud of that. Mayor, I appreciate you and the council's uh, 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 help and in, in, in getting the road name and I appreciate all you people for coming there's nobody in my lifetime and I've been in law enforcement for 41 years in this county uh, but, but I'm 60 years old in my lifetime there's nobody to me uh, that ever reached the level of uh, 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 of respect in my mind that early did. I, I, and and the people that work for him and a lot of you people judges uh, in this community you had a tremendous amount of respect for him, but not for any other reason except he earned it. Thank you very much. I'm, su I'm supposed to invite Susan Lee Reed and Lynn Parrish up here. So, uh, Lynn is my, when I went to work for the Sheriff's Office in 1976, she was my school detective partner. We solved a lot of crimes. <laughs> Yes, we did, Phil. Thank you. I, I, I'm just overwhelmed right now. Um, on behalf of Earl's girls, Betty, my sister Susan, Kathy, who couldn't be here, and my mother, um, and myself, we just want to thank you all so much for this incredible honor. Um, you all said so many nice things about our dad we all knew him we know we know what kind of man he was how much we loved him and we're just glad to know that you loved him like we do it's um just amazing to stand up here before you i want to thank you mayor persons commission chairman tom everybody who had a hand it i don't want to leave out anybody's name please forgive me i don't want to recognize somebody and leave somebody out but I'm just so grateful for all of you. Um, two of the, I think, proudest times in my daddy's life was the first when he married my mother, and the second is when he graduated from the FBI National Academy. The great 87th is what he would call it. He was so very proud of that. Before that time, there wasn't any, anybody locally, I don't, I don't know of anybody who'd been to the FBI NA, and, uh, he has certainly um, set an example. I know Phil's graduate. There's so many now that are graduates of the academy, and 
that was one thing very important to Daddy. He um, he, um, he he wanted excellence. He wanted um, to be the best you could be. He wanted to give all that he could to the citizens of Douglas County. He always said, you don't serve You serve the community, they don't serve you. He was so proud to be your sheriff. He lived, breathed, <laughs> ate, I mean, everything was, just like Phil said, I, there were so many nights, he'd come home two or three o'clock in the morning, I don't know why, but sometimes I would just always wake up, you know, and, and he was there. He would always come into our room, open the door, blow a kiss at us. And uh, we knew he was home safe. There was a lot of times we were worried about him because, you know, as Phil said, he was involved with some pretty shady folks, but he was going to stay with it until he, he uh, brought him to justice. And uh, nine times out of ten, he did. People still tell me to this day, oh, I loved your daddy. And, and it's so heartwarming to know that people still know him, care about him, love him. And it's some of the deputies that originally worked for him are still with Phil and, and I'm so thankful and I know Daddy would be so proud, so proud of all of you and especially Phil for the, the, the professionalism and the way that you're leading the Sheriff's Office. He's looking down and, and smiling. He, uh, um, he, he'd be very proud of all of you. Um, you know, it, it wasn't a job to him, it, it was his, his life. When you, when you worked for him, you were you're a part of his family. He, he loved each and every person that wore that badge, and not just wore the badge, the DA, I, everybody. He was so, um, he was just so happy to be, to be your sheriff. And uh, I do think it's very apropos that as uh, you're sitting in the back of the patrol car going to your Final destination down the road, the last name you're going to see is Earl D. Lee, and I know he's smiling about that. <laughs> so uh, I just uh, I just want to leave you with a, uh, a, a quote from, uh, if anybody's familiar with Lonesome Dove, my favorite cowboy, Augustus McRae. I think it would sum up how Earl felt about his tenure as sheriff and his life in Douglas County. It was quite a party. Thank you. Several, um, well, basically, everybody sitting here is our, our, our family. Um, I can't call them all by name, but thank you all for coming today, and, and we appreciate all your kind remarks. Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, again, as, as my sister Lynn said, we appreciate uh, all of you coming. I'm not going to um, reiterate what all she just said, but there's one thing that happened. Saturday, uh, my husband and I were out riding our motorcycle and we came by and we saw some hoopla going on over here and uh, was wondering if this was going to be the, the street where we were supposed to be uh, because they had notified us that this was going to happen today. So we just proceeded to ride down what is now going to be Earl D. Lee Boulevard and we went to the jail. And when we pulled up, it was just so awesome. And my first thought was, oh my gosh. When Daddy got the jail um, built in the 80s, you know, we started in a house. A lot of y'all don't know that. But I'm thinking this must have been how he felt to be uh, so awesome. And, and I was just so excited. I thought Daddy would just be so proud to have this jail. And uh, we just really, again, just really, uh, this just means so much to us. And uh, we just appreciate you all coming to help us celebrate this. Thank you. Let me make just a couple of closing remarks and then we'll do the unveiling. Well, first of all, we'll make a presentation to the family and then we'll do the unveiling. But let me say this, it's humbling to me to be able to, I'm, I'm the one that gets to get up here and give the speech and do the unveiling. Um, but you've heard a lot of stories about a lot, from a lot of people that had certainly much closer experiences with the sheriff than I did. Now, that's because they're a lot older than I am. <laughs> but seriously, 
I didn't have the, the same opportunity to have those experiences that they did, but I've lived in this great community for 35 years. And in 35 years, I knew of the reputation that the sheriff had and what you've heard spoken of. Uh, he was feared and fearless. Uh, he protected our community. He set the example and he mentored a lot of good people. And that's the legacy, the real legacy that somebody should leave behind. It's not the material things, it's not the money. Those things pass. But the real legacy of an individual is what people remember you by. That's the legacy that we all should want to leave behind. The legacy that Earl D. Lee leaves behind is one of commitment to his community, commitment to his family, and a love of his community. And there's an old saying, fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. And that's whether it be family, or the people that he mentors. And you've heard from a lot of people talk about the examples that he set for them and what he taught them, and then that's carried on throughout our community. And what I would leave you with today, I challenge each and every one of you to continue with that legacy, that commitment to our community, and that love of community. Because what you're seeing here today and hearing is what a community is about. It's people pulling together, recognizing one another for their commitment and their contributions to their community. And we have a great community. We have a great bunch of people that are committed to it. And I applaud all these people that you've seen that have come before me. And, and, and to be quite honest with you, it's very humbling to me just to be able to participate and be involved in it and honor your dad, your granddad. Uh, He left you a legacy and something to be proud of, and it's something that we want to continue to foster in our community so that it continues to be the great community that it is, and the folks outside of our community continue to be afraid to come to Douglas County. We embrace those that want to come, bring commerce, live, play, and work in our community, but those that want to do something different we want them to fear coming to our community. Unfortunately, we have the folks that continue with that legacy that Earl Lee gave them. So with that being said, I have something that I want to give to the family before we do the unveiling. I want to give you kind of a commemorative of this day uh, so that you'll have something to take home and remember and you won't have to ride by the street every day to see it. But we have some smaller versions of the sign that you see up here. Like I said, I didn't have the opportunity of knowing Earl personally, but I've known some members of the family for the better part of 20 years. And like I said, the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. And certainly the mentors or the, the people that he mentored, uh, the examples that they continue to set and leave for each and every one of us, they didn't fall far from the tree either. So with that being said, uh, if you'd like to stand, uh, we'll come up, we'll do the unveiling, and everybody will get to watch and certainly be a part of it. And thank you all for participating in the meeting here today.